In this video, we discuss the five things that the happiest retirees get right. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! There are a lot of rules around saving for retirement. The 4% rule, don't spend more than 4% of what you have in retirement assets plus inflation. The 10% rule, when you're saving for retirement, make sure that you contribute at least 10% of your net income annually. The 60-40 rule, when you're in retirement, make sure that 60% of your retirement assets are bonds and 40% are equity, and so on, and so on, and so on. But there are no rules around what makes people happy. There aren't a lot of videos like this out there because frankly, being happy is subjective. However, there is strong evidence out there on five or six key areas that just about everybody would agree upon. In this video, we'll discuss what those are. By the way, this list is comprised of information that I received from surveys and comments over the years and culled down to what I consider to be the most essential. But of course, you are going to have others that you would most likely add to it. If this is you, please put your ideas in the comments section below so that others can benefit from them as well. As always, I'll remind you at the end of the video so that you don't have to stop at the beginning or the middle to input an idea that you have. As we go through this list, you will note that many of them have been hiding in plain sight, meaning that you knew that they were there at one point, but have long forgotten. This is not unusual for people because they often get caught up in the moment. Point number one is your personal health and safety. Without health, it's very difficult. In fact, I would say virtually impossible to be happy in retirement. With rare exception, every single one of us could be healthier. And in retirement, after a lifetime of wear and tear, this is particularly true. Let's be honest, we have not always treated our bodies like a temple, but also note that we are not alone. This would be the majority of people who enter retirement. We were busy, too busy in fact, because we were involved in the game of life. Many times we ate too much or ate the wrong food and had many big nights out along the way. Regular doctor visits were rare when things were going well, and when they were not going well, we procrastinated then as well. We often skipped medication and forgot to renew it when the time came. Fast forward, now you're in retirement or approaching retirement, and often doing the right thing means, frankly, doing the opposite of what you did when you were younger if you did the wrong thing. See your doctor for a basic roadmap, of course, but once you have that roadmap, don't forget to engage and actually action those steps. Point number two, happy retirees connect to the moment very, very well. Let me explain. We spend our entire lives running on the mouse wheel, running harder and faster, trying to achieve, trying to get to that target, but the target is elusive. We get very close, of course, because we have the accoutrements to prove it, the house, the car, the nice clothes, all of that and more for many of us, but we never quite get there. And living in the future, always after what's next, does have its benefits. You tend to grow professionally and personally, although the struggle is immense for many people. In retirement, in most cases, you don't need to find out how to save for a down payment for a house, fund a child's college education, or save for retirement, now that you're in retirement. Instead, you are given the gift of the here and now, finally. The ability to enjoy the simple beauty of a painting that's been on your wall for 20 years and you didn't notice it the entire time. The emotion that you feel when you see the excitement in your grandson's face when you teach him to ride a bike for the first time. Or the ability to be in the moment when you watch your granddaughter walk down the aisle even though you note that they're not in the moment because they're thinking about what comes next that evening. In retirement, the ability to enjoy the here and now is so much bigger than the ability to plan for the there and then. You've already done that. Point number three is connection to family. For many retirees, the family is the center of everything. They look forward, even plan for birthdays, holidays, and other times where they can get together with those that they love. Connection to family has two types of what's called an EV. EV number one is the economic value, it's the cost, and it's a very low EV in most cases. The other EV is the emotional value, it's how you feel, and that is incalculable. They need you, they want you in their lives, you need them, you want to be in their lives. The combination of the two makes this point so important. The next point is that in retirement, the happiest retirees 
generally focus in on wisdom. At a certain age, you begin to see the difference between truth and fiction. You see the patterns because you've seen them before. And the adage, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, goes out the door when it comes to truth and wisdom. Those in retirement have the ability and the time to acknowledge and test competing ideas, and this in and of itself is the foundation for wisdom. Knowing that the sale doesn't really end tomorrow, knowing that the pitch person on television selling you the product or service with great emotion is not getting through to you because you're countering that with extreme focus, wisdom, and knowledge makes you very happy and takes a lot of stress out of your life. Most importantly, knowing the difference between a major issue that needs to be dealt with and a minor issue that you can just let go and then letting it go. The last point is one of the most important and that is having the one thing, the one thing that makes you and you alone happy. It's something that others may yawn at, but yet it gets you out of bed in the morning. Let me explain. My one thing is golf. Why do I like it? Because it requires great focus to improve your game, but once you do improve your game, the reward, the level of satisfaction is huge. Now people will say golf is really expensive. I've personally found that not to be the case. Next week, for example, I will be filming from my vacation and one of my favorite places in the world, actually. I'll be telling you more about it when you see the video, but around that vacation is going to be a lot of golf for both my family and for me. Now, not everybody in our household is good at golf. So you don't want to go to St. Andrews. You want to go to a beginner golf course. And I found one in the area that has a $20 per person cost plus the cost of the cart basically a very inexpensive way to play golf for people that are just learning how to play golf, which would be several of the people in the foursome that are going to be out there with me. This means it's an amazing opportunity to golf and not feel the pressure of the people behind you creeping up, trying to keep you moving because everybody is not that great on the course. I have another friend who spent a bit of money on a drone and now makes drone videos. These places look quite ordinary from ground level, but if you go 2,000 feet in the air, they look spectacular. And the best part is that he not only films these videos and enjoys these videos, but he sells them as well. That's a side benefit. He wasn't doing that to make money, but it is a nice benefit when you're in retirement. He does it for the majestic beauty of being able to see the world from the eyes of an eagle, as he calls it. The point is what you are passionate about doesn't need to be anything but what you are passionate about. In retirement, you have a veto right over just about anything that doesn't completely serve you. As a reminder, don't forget to put a comment below on something that you enjoy that isn't on this top five list. Also check out this video on the average 401k balance of a 60 year old midway through 2022. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.